Tonight, Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship is back in Montana, coming to you live from the Four Seasons Arena in Great Falls. It's BKFC 24, and we will open with three preliminary bouts. Then at the top of the hour, our main card will begin live on the Bare Knuckle TV app, which you can download at bkfc.com. This evening's co-main event, Louis Lopez versus Rusty Crowder in the featherweight division. And our main event, the champion Lorenzo Hunt versus Joe Riggs for the BKFC light heavyweight title. Hey everyone, with Chris Lights Out Lytle, I'm Sean Wheelock. Chris, we are now in the midst of a four week run that will produce five BKFC events. Absolutely, very excited. Title aspirations in these title fights, actually a couple of them. What a job this promotion's doing, put on a lot of fights, and not only a lot of fights, but high level fights at that. Chris, absolutely stacked as we move on back to back next week. Friday, May 6th, we're in Orlando, Florida. And then on May 7th, BKFC Thailand 2. And what we talked about, straps and contention right here. Adam Kleckler, heavyweight title on board. This is back to back week's title. Unbelievable. Our main event tonight for the BKFC 185 pound world title. Genuine animosity coming in between the champion Lorenzo Hunt and Joe Diesel Riggs. That animosity came to a head yesterday at the weigh-ins. Absolutely. Sometimes you have to manufacture this. Sometimes you definitely don't. It seems like when Lorenzo Hunt's involved, it's never manufactured, but it's always real. And it's always there to help motivate him, I believe. I think he has to be angry to fight. Joe Riggs not the same, but Joe is angry at this fight. You never see him get mad before a fight like this, but there's a look at this, how mad he is. Joe feels disrespected. Sometimes when you do that to a fighter, it brings out the best in him. Sometimes it makes them so mad that they, they get reckless and they cause problems for themselves. We have to see what happens when Joe Riggs gets this angry, but you can tell he was very upset. Lorenzo's loving this. Makes him excited against him. He wants to bring out that opponent to make them be open and make it easier for him. If he can land that one big punch, he feels like he's going to get the knockout. Tonight's fight odds are presented by BetOnline.ag. And as you can see here, Lorenzo went minus 210. That means he's a two to one favorite. You have to bet $210 to win 100. Joe Riggs, an underdog. If you bet $100, you can win 170. The rules of Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship, all bouts are scheduled for five two-minute rounds and are scored by three judges on the 10-point must system. Punching in the active clinch is allowed. There is no three knockdown rule. All kicks, knees, and elbows are illegal, as are all takedowns and submissions. We'll open BKFC 24 with a bout in the featherweight division. Dylan Schulte versus Derek Gates. You see the numbers, they are presented by Crescent Tools. You can see here, Sean, everything fairly similar. You have a one and a half inch reach advantage for Derek Gates. That's not a lot, but it could be enough to keep Dylan Schulte at bay, keep him punching every time he wants to come in to close that gap and land those big punches. So Derek's gonna wanna continue to pop that jab. Smile on the face of Derek Gates, set for bout number two in BKFC, his third bout overall in bare knuckle. He's also had exactly 30 fights in his AMI MMA career. Gates told us, Chris, in our fighter meeting, he's put a big focus in training on being more precise with his punches. Absolutely, he wants to make sure he's able to counter off of his slips. When he dodges the punches, when he moves out of the way, he wants to come back firing. He feels like that's the time when people's hands are down and most vulnerable to getting hit. This is the BKFC and indeed bare knuckle debut for Dylan Schulte. He's fought six times in his pro MMA career. He's also had one pro boxing bout, one pro kickboxing bout. Schulte told us, I want to throw every punch with intent in this fight. Absolutely. He describes himself as being hard-nosed, tenacious, patient, explosive. That is exactly what happens when you have somebody who wants to do what you talk about. Throw hard punches with bad intentions. To get BKFC 24 started, we send it to the always outstanding Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you and welcome to the Four Seasons Arena here in beautiful Great Falls, Montana. 
And welcome to BKFC 24. BKFC 24 Freeview begins with five two-minute rounds in the featherweight division. Presented to you by Onnit Total Human Optimization. Introducing you first, fighting out of the red corner. Tonight he wears blue and white. He stands five feet, nine inches tall. His official weight, 143.9 pounds. He steps into the squared circle for the second time. Fighting out of Eagle, Idaho, here is Derek the Buck Gates. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he wears black and white. He stands 5 feet 8 inches tall. His official weight, 145.8 pounds. He holds a combined combat sports record of eight fights, and tonight makes his bare-knuckle debut. Fighting out of Denver, Colorado, here is Dylan the Villain Shanti. And our referee in charge of the action, Nick Barons. The great state of Montana does currently have an inactive athletic commission, so the Kansas Athletic Commission with Executive Director Adam Rohrbach is in attendance regulating tonight's event. So we will have real-time scoring, meaning that the fighters, the corners, and all of us will know the actual three judges' scorecards round by round. The bell in round number one. Fast start from Derek Gates, landing the right hand. He's in the blue trucks and firing right back and recording the knockdown in the black trucks is Dylan Schulte. Dylan got rocked, but he came right back with hard punches, and I'm not sure if Gates is getting up. That rock Gates. He's not getting up. That, that, that rocked him good. Just like that, a rapid-fire start and a rapid-fire finish here in BKFC 24. A huge win for Dylan Schulte. What a comeback right there. You can tell he wasn't quite ready. He got hit with a good punch by Gates, and it kind of shook his bell for him. And he's like, oh, rung his bell, I should say. And you can see here from the from the recap, got hit with that little right hand and another little left. Comes right back with his own hard left. That's what did the damage right from the very beginning. Just a lot of punch. It was that straight kind of a hook left that landed right on the button. Beautiful punch. You could just tell right there that Dylan Schulte got upset. He got mad. He got hit. And he just started throwing bombs and one of them landed. Again, as you saw, Derek Gates off of the scratch line landed the first significant punch of the fight. And then one way traffic in favor of Dylan Schulte knocking down Derek Gates. He did not attempt to beat the 10 count from referee Nick Barron. And that is a big BKFC debut for Dylan Schulte. Showed a lot of power, showed that he can take a punch. He did get rocked and was able to come right back and fire his own punch. Great start. I think he will be much improved next time. You know, hey, I don't even want to take that first shot because you never know how it's going to go after that. He got cut, it looks like, from it. Here is Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, our referee in charge, Nick Behrens, reaches the count of 10 at 20 seconds into round number one for your winner by KO, Dylan, the villain, Schulte. Fantastic start for Dylan. Like to see him fight again. I feel like he learned a lot just getting hit. You never know what it's like until you get hit with the bare knuckle. He knows now. He came back firing. He passed the test. Derek Gates came out throwing hard, landed the big right hand off of the scratch line. But then Dylan Schulte landing that left hook, which proved to be the final punch of the fight, knocking out Dylan Derek Gates. The winner by way of first round KO, Dylan Schulte defeats Derek Gates. Welcome to the world of Bare Knuckle TV. Watch every live Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship pay-per-view event for only $4.99 per month. Enjoy our all-new library of content, including unlimited access to the full library of BKFC pay-per-views, behind-the-scenes access, exclusive BKFC original series, and additional live Bare Knuckle fights from around the globe. You can access it anywhere you want, anytime you want, instantly on most streaming devices. It's available right now on Bare Knuckle TV. Over 1,000 hours of on-demand content, uncut and uncensored. All here, anytime you want, anywhere you want, for only $4.99 a month. Subscribe now exclusively at BKFC.
Bet.com. For a long time, the fighters in this division were scared to say my name, so I took on the boogeyman. Let's really test it out. Let's really see who's the big dog in the world, who's really the top dog. A huge right hand on the overhand press from This is the fight of my life. This is the hardest, the hardest camp I've ever had, the best shape I've ever been in. And he's going to see the best me, and I'm sure I'm going to see the best him. This is everything to me. I'm taking that belt home with me. I'm cool until you say my name. Once you say my name, now we got a problem. Now I got to come show you why you should have never spoken my name. Dave Mundell, thanks for taking this flight. We're going to go in here and put on a show. You already know what's up. Down goes Ronnie Forney. C24, live tonight from Great Falls, Montana, is presented by Crescent Tools, Odd Socks, BetOnline.ag, and by Cheddar Token. Crescent Tools presents our tale of the tape for this light heavyweight bout, James Dennis versus Brian Maxwell. And Sean, you can see here, Maxwell has a few inch height advantage, but a huge reach advantage right now. Nine inches, that means he's gonna wanna stay on the outside, make Dennis pay every time he steps in to land that big punch. Brian Maxwell's going to him with a one-two, keep him at bay, he's gotta utilize that reach if he wants to win this fight. This is bout number six in bare knuckle for Brian Maxwell and his fifth promotionally in BKFC. He's also fought five times in his pro MMA career. June of last year, Brian Maxwell boxed, boxed the former NFL All-Pro wide receiver Chad Ochocinco Johnson in a four-round exhibition, recording a knockdown that was on the undercard of Floyd Mayweather Jr. versus Logan Paul. Maxwell formed a very close friendship with Chad Ochocinco Johnson on that night, which continues. He really takes pride in that friendship. They talk almost every day, and Johnson is watching at home tonight for this bout. Well, Maxwell said one thing. He's really been trying to get around a lot of guys in box with guys who have a lot of grittiness. He wants to develop more. that be a tougher fighter, work on his defense, work on his hand plays, and his punching power, but he really wants to get in there and make it a dirty, nasty, ugly fight if he has to. Bout number two in BKFC for James Dennis. He also fought 14 times as an AMI in mixed martial arts. Dennis said, I quickly found out in bare knuckle that it's tougher to recover from punches than it is in MMA. I have to be aware of that. I don't want to just rush in and engage. I have to patiently look for openings. Feels like he wants to use in and out explosiveness, clinch, trap that arm, utilize his inside game. He has to do that because he's a smaller fighter. One thing I really like you said about Southpaw versus right hand, and he has to get outside that lead foot so he can land it straight down the pipe. Very intelligent. Back we go to Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, we are set for the next fight of the night. Scheduled for five two-minute rounds in the light heavyweight division. Presented to you by Cheddar Token. Introducing you first, fighting out of the red corner. Tonight he wears white and gold. He stands at even six feet tall. His official weight, 183.7 pounds. He steps into the squared circle tonight, looking for bare knuckle fight number six. Fighting out of Roanoke, Virginia. Here is Brian, Mr. Red Rims Maxwell. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he wears black and green. He stands 5 feet 9 inches tall. His official weight, 184.2 pounds. He steps into the squared circle for the second time. Fighting out of Great Falls, Montana. Here is James Knucklehead Dennis. And our referee in charge of the action, Nick Behrens. 
So often in our fighter meetings, we hear fighters tell us, Chris, they want to be less emotional, more calm. The opposite for Brian Maxwell. He said, I've been too calm. I want to be emotional in this fight. Being emotional gives me focus. That will lead me to victory. Both fighters up to scratch, sporting touch of hands. Round number one. Black trucks for James Dennis, white trucks for Brian Maxwell. Faint by Maxwell. There's the lead jab. Right hand, that's rolled a slip immediately, and correctly so by Nick Barron's. Absolutely, you can tell Brian Maxwell just pushed forward too much and got his head over his feet and just out of his balance. Into the clinch. Now Dennis looking to come forward with this straight right hand. That was clever, ducking his head overhand right again. Short right hands, and now Brian Maxwell firing back. Big right hand and another on the uppercut from Dennis, and down goes Brian Maxwell. Maxwell is hurt badly right now. He's trying to get up, but I don't think his legs are underneath him. A little wobbly right now. Mandatory eight count from Nick Barrett. Maxwell's got to be very careful right now. He does not want to go out there and just try to trade punches. He better work on clinching or moving. If he just gets hit one more time, that could be LC Rowe. See how hard now James Dennis goes for the finish. 60 seconds remaining round number one. Maxwell firing back with the uppercut. Short left hand lands from James Dennis. Down goes Brian Maxwell for the second time in the opening round. Luckily, that wasn't a clean punch. It was enough to knock him down. That's what I'm talking about. His legs are not underneath him yet. He needs to move more. Seven. Eight. Come to me. Over. If I'm Dennis right now, I'm trying to close it out right now. You don't want to let this guy get confidence. You don't want to get his legs back. Just step in with that big right hand like that. Just like that on cue. The right hand on the step in from James Dennis. The turn now for Brian Maxwell. Quick separation from Nick Barrett. Overhand right, the duck under. Left hand, huge left hand from Dennis. Maxwell's loading up too much. He's going to miss that every time. All Maxwell has to do is duck under a little bit. Final seconds, round number one. <sighs> Sounded like the bell to me. I think that was a premature bell. Came in a minute 50. Another big right hand. Oh, another through the ring ropes. There's the bell. No three knockdown no. rule. You cannot be saved by the bell in any round. And you see the count from Nick Barrett. Five, six, seven, eight. You're good to continue. Sure. And you can tell he's taking a long look at Brian Maxwell to see if he's going to be able to fight. Sure, you're good. Dizzy. Nick Barrett staying with Brian Maxwell. That's first class refereeing from Nick Barrett. Making the assessment, sending Maxwell to his corner, he now has 60 seconds to recover. Maybe about 30 now that he talked to him for a long time, but here's a quick look at the first knockdown, and you can see James backing up, just trying to create that right space. Boom, just a little perfect punch. That one hurt, he hit him with a couple little rights. One of them looked like with the back of his hand. And there he's already got Maxwell hurt. This is at the end of the fight. Hit him in the right spot and then hit him as he turned. You cannot keep your eyes off the opponent. If you get hit, you better cover up. You can't turn away or you're going to get hit with that punch. It's the one you don't see that really hurts you. And the third knockdown was correctly a knockdown because, as you saw, Maxwell fell on the second rope. It was the rope that supported him from hitting the canvas. All right, what James needs to do is tighten up those punches. He's winging these hooks. Let Maxwell get it underneath him. He needs to turn those under into the body or an uppercut, and those would be devastating. If you go for the head, go head hunting, and you miss, that puts you out of position. James Dennis recording three knockdowns in round number one, the start of round number two. Sean, Sean I said that, but once you hurt a guy, it's so easy just to head hunt and try and take him out with one punch. It's more difficult, more disciplined. You hit the body. There, oh, number four on the straight right hand, and we might be done. You see how he dropped that in lower? That was. That was not over the top right there. That was right in the perfect spot. We're going to get the long count now. Nick Barron sending back James Dennis a bit too eager. It might not matter as Barron's assessing Maxwell. And that is it. Win number one in BKFC for James Dennis. And, and Maxwell's complaining that he got knocked down four times. That last one looked very bad. He was hurt. His legs weren't all the way underneath him. I didn't see him being able to come back and win that fight, so I think that's a good stoppage by the referee. And here, you're going to see this right hand. 
See how that was straight. That wasn't looping over the top. He did exactly what I talked about. He straightened up. He didn't turn it under, but he didn't loop it over the top with that hook. It was just a nice straight right, right down the pipe. Bam. Perfect shot. That's what kind of helps sometimes when you're throwing those wild hooks. And then when you throw that straight right, it's almost like a change. It comes from a different direction. You saw the end of the fight. Maxwell beat the 10 count from Nick Barron's. Barron's a first-class MMA and bare knuckle referee talking to Maxwell. Maxwell then arguing and Barron stopped the fight. But you saw Barron's looking right in the eyes of Brian Maxwell. Maxwell leaning slightly to the left. That's knockdown number four in just over two minutes. Barron's is really closely looking at Maxwell. He needs him to come forward, say, yes, I want to fight. He did not get that from Maxwell. And Brian Maxwell obviously disappointed. That, I believe, is the correct decision. And that, for certain, is a first-class win for James Dennis. We go to Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, our referee in charge, Nick Barron, steps in and calls a stop to this fight at 26 seconds into round number two for your winner by TKO, James Knucklehead Dennis. Great win for James Dennis. Great display. Show a lot of power, poise right there. Smelt blood in the water and went after it and took his opponent out. James Dennis said, I don't want to be overly eager. I want to patiently look for openings. He found the openings. Indeed, he made the openings, and he found the finish. Four knockdowns recorded in total for James Dennis, including the final one in round two. The winner, by way of second round TKO, James Dennis defeats Brian Maxwell. For a long time, the fighters in this division were scared to say my name, so I took on the boogeyman. I cheer right hand on the overhand press bubble, man. This is the fight of my life. This is you know, the hardest out the hardest camp I've ever had, the best shape I've ever been in. Dave Mandel, thanks for taking this fight. We're gonna go in here and put on a show. You already know what's up. Tonight only, you'll receive 30% off all Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship merchandise when you use the promo code BKFCFTL at BareKnuckleShop.com. There's a huge selection of items, colors, and styles to choose from with sizes in women's, men's, and kids. You can place your order now at BareKnuckleShop.com. And again, a reminder, you can use promo code BKFCFTL at checkout to get 30% off your entire purchase. You're with us live worldwide online. It is our free view, the preliminary bounce. BKFC 24 tonight from a sold out first season's arena in Great Falls, Montana. First time in Great Falls, our second time in the great state of Montana. Outstanding crowd so far. Two fights, two finishes. One in the first round, and as you just saw, one in the second round. Our main card begins top of the hour, the way to watch worldwide, live on the Bare Knuckle TV app. You will see the QR code. You know what to do, just scan that, as we talked about last week. Especially if you're under 30, you don't need me to help. If you're over 30, you gotta take out your phone, ask your kids or your grandkids, scan that QR code. It will get you to our link for our broadcast. Purchase our broadcast tonight. And of course, you can purchase the Bare Knuckle TV app, which entitles you as part of your regular subscription to every single Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship event. We're in the midst of a great run, Chris. Five events coming your way over the next four weeks. This is week number two, then back-to-back -back events. May 6th, we're in Orlando, Florida. May 7th, it's BKFC Thailand 2. Absolutely. We talked about earlier, we have a lot of great fights coming up. Two title fights. We got one tonight, one next week. Unbelievable. And, and unbelievable to me is the price. For $5 a month, you get you know, a year's worth of fights for the price of one pay-per-view. A lot of other sports, so it's a great deal. Yeah, there are no additional fees, no additional pay-per-view add-ons. Again, as part of your monthly Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship subscription, Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship is the home, bkfc.com. You can get your subscription, and again, you see every single event. Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship, our numbered events, our fight nights, our events as we're going to the United Kingdom. We'll be in London on July 16th. Again, May 7th, we're back in Thailand. It keeps rolling. We roll tonight here in Montana. We roll to our main event. At stake, the BKFC 185-pound World Championship. The title is Lorenzo Hunt versus Joe Riggs. 
Chris, you and I were talking off air through your outstanding pro fighting career, which spanned not only MMA, but also boxing, also bare knuckle. You told me you fought angry just one time because you were being trolled <laughs> online, but that was out of character for yes. you. Some fighters need that. They have to artificially create that anger. Other fighters say, I do not want to be anger, angry at all. Fedor Emelianenko, a great example. Never broke character, never got emotional. Well, you see, I think this all boils down to is, in my case, and I think a lot of fighters, is, you know, you always look at a fighter, and the great Chael Sonnen always says, a fighter's number one concern is running out of gas. If you're ever in there and you have nothing left, it's the worst feeling in the world. If you've had it, you're like, I got to do whatever I can and never have that happen again. When you fight an emotional, you burn off your energy. You get tired quicker. That's why I was always like, you cannot go in there emotional because you're going to make mistakes later on. You're going to be tired and you're going to make huge mistakes. So I've always been a proponent of not getting emotional. Some fighters really do well with it. They feel like they always, I don't know if there's angry in life and that helps them because they can always use that challenge. I'm not sure. It made me tired and I didn't want to ever do it again. So I think we see that tonight. Lorenzo Hunt, he likes to be angry. He's gotten Joe Riggs angry. We'll see how Joe does when he is angry. Some people fight better. Some people don't fight as well. So we're going to find that out exactly what's going to happen with Joe tonight. That is our main event of the evening. Still 10 bouts coming your way. One more preliminary bout on this worldwide free view online. And then at the top of the hour, our main card begins. Nine fights in total. Again, you know the drill. Go online, bkfc.com. If you haven't done so already, download the Bare Knuckle TV app. And you can see this event in every Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship event as part of your regular subscription. If you did join us late, I'm sure you can eventually go back and rebroadcast. Re I guess no one rewinds anymore. <laughs> rebroadcast and you can see online the fights. But our opening bout, Dylan Schulte taking just 20 seconds to record the victory. Coming hard off of scratch line, but you'll see Derek Gates in the blue trunks landing that significant right hand, and then all Dylan Schulte. I think it just made Dylan mad. He got hit with that punch, and he wasn't ready for it. He was like, oh, this is bare knuckle. Baptized him quickly, but then he came right back with that hard left hand. Did the damage right there. This is bare knuckle. It just takes one punch in the right place, and that's it, and he landed it. Big win for Dylan Schulte in his BKFC debut. And then the bout that we just had, James Dennis getting his first victory now in two BKFC bouts against Brian Maxwell, recording four knockdowns. If you did not see the fight live, go back, find it online, including on the Bare Knuckle TV app. Outstanding from Dennis, dropping Maxwell three times in round one and for a final time in round number two. You know, Sean, there's no three knockdown rule, which we absolutely love. That should be up to the... The referee to decide that. We had last week where there was a fight, three knockdowns in the first round, came back, knocked the guy out in the second round. So in this sport, it is possible. More flash knockdowns and not people getting hurt with that big glove that disseminates the pressure. So I'm glad that they let that go, but I'm glad he stopped it when he did. There's been a lot of focus in BKFC, and rightly so, in the women's 125-pound division. It is stacked, starting with our champion, Christine Faria. The original queen of bare knuckle, Beck Rawlings, is coming back from Australia. She had a short stint in Bellator. UFC, BKFC, Bellator, now back to BKFC. She's coming back. You look, Rachel Ostevich, Paige Van Zant, Britton Hart. It's a phenomenal list. Taylor Starling. I'm going to hear from the female fighters who I did <laughs> not mention. Forgive me. It is stacked at 125. And now we're seeing a lot of buzz, a lot of buildup at 115 pounds. Sharissa Segal at now 115 pounds, dropping from 125. Two outstanding fighters at 115 tonight. Andy Nguyen, who I commentated in Lion Fight, an MMA veteran versus Cassie Robb. Her second fight in BKFC, dropping from 125 to her natural weight of 115. Well, that's the thing. You've seen a lot of these females who were fighting at 125, and the only reason has been that's the only option. And it doesn't sound like a lot, 10-pound difference. That's huge when you're talking the difference between 115 and 125. You have some girls who are cutting down from 135, 140 maybe, versus a girl who walks around about 120. So there is a huge difference right there. 115 is needed to be added because 125 was our most stacked division in all BKFC, men's or women's. Now we're kind of spreading that out a little bit, but man, there's still both those divisions are very tough. Jetty Savage, I would be remiss not mentioning she's done good things at 125. <laughs> she is firmly ensconced now at 115 pounds as well. 
So we are rolling with our free view. Again, you're with us live worldwide online. BKFC 24, our preliminary bouts. One more remaining. And again, a reminder, at the top of the hour, our main card begins. Nine fights headed your way from a sold-out crowd here in Great Falls, Montana, at the Four Seasons Arena, culminating with our main event, the fight for the BKFC light heavyweight strap, the champion Lorenzo Hunt versus Joe Diesel Riggs. If you have not done so, download the Bare Knuckle TV app, and you can get that show as part of your regular subscription. We roll on now with the prelims. It's our final free view. We go to the numbers. They are presented by Crescent Tools. In the middleweight division, Braden Tobey versus Jordan Christensen. You can see here, Braden Tobey, three and a half inch reach advantage, which could be significant. Jordan's going to have to get inside on him if he wants to land a punch. It's up to Tobey to keep punching, throw that jab, throw the one-two, keep that range finder out, out there and make sure Jordan Christensen takes a punch every time he tries to step close. Bow number two in BKFC for Jordan Christensen. Also a veteran of three bouts in his pro MMA career. Christensen in that BKFC debut last October. He lost by way of second round TKO position stop it versus Dallas Davison. Christensen said, I didn't take the sport seriously. I didn't take my opponent seriously. I didn't take my training seriously. All of that has changed. I'm here to redeem myself. I am here to make a statement. Made a ton of changes in there. Done a lot more sparring, focus on distance. He didn't even tell people last time he was doing the bare knuckle, just doing regular MMA sparring. You can't do that. He learned that. He said, this is a real sport, totally different. Totally changed everything up. Really wants to focus on his cardio. Wants to get back to his old school boxing. Knows he has a lot of experience. Wants to use pitter pattern, roll, and come up firing when he punches. BKFC and indeed Pro Combat Sports debut for 21-year-old Braden Tovey. Full 16 years younger than his opponent in this middleweight bout, Jordan Christensen. Tovey has fought eight times as an AMI in MMA. He said, constant forward pressure is my best asset as a fighter. Sometimes he says he comes out slow. He wants to correct that problem. He said he wants to be a bulldog out there. You be technical, but with pressure and a lot of volume. He's inside and outside movement. Doesn't want to stay right there where he's hittable, but be able to be in and out the entire time. Back we go to Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, we are set for the next fight of the night. Scheduled for five two-minute rounds in the middleweight division. Presented to you by betonline.ag. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner. Tonight, he wears black. He stands 5 feet 10 inches tall, his official weight an even 175 pounds. He steps into the squared circle tonight for the second time. Fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada, here is Jordan, the Hayes Haymaker Christensen. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, he wears dark gray. He stands 5 feet 11 inches tall. His official weight, 172.1 pounds. Tonight, he makes his bare-knuckle debut. Fighting out of Great Falls, Montana. Here is Braden Bad Intentions, Tovey. And our referee in charge of the action, Big Dan Merkliata. Tovey told us, I want to establish dominance through pressure. Christensen said he's going to come forward behind the jab. I'm going to keep landing over his jab. Round number one. Both fighters, as you see, in black trunks. Blue glove tape for Braden Tovey. Red glove tape for Jordan Christensen. If you're new to bare knuckle, that tape is exactly one inch below the knuckles. Good left hand from Christensen, stepping into the pocket, right back out. Both fighters in the center circle. You can tell already Christensen looks a lot more comfortable this time than last. It was totally foreign to him. He didn't really understand the sport. This time he feels like he does. Christensen now with an effective clinch. Call a break from Dan Bergliotto, right back to it. Good left hand lands from Tovey. 
we switch it up in stance from now and, now and again. Every now and again, changes from southpaw to orthodox. Christensen showing patience, turning, looking for the angle. Maybe pulling back that left hand on the two. Now five remaining, round number one of this 175-pound bout. Kobe switching to ortho from the southpaw stance. Good overhand right from Christensen. And I'm always a big fan. If you see your opponent switch stance, you need to come with punches right away. Sometimes it takes those eyes a minute to adjust. Tovey talked about forward pressure. We're seeing a lot of that forward pressure here in round number one. Christensen continually circling, continuing, continually moving. With the one-two there. Overhand right, not fully through from Jordan Christensen. Very difficult to get the adjustments right there. Both guys are switching up their stance quite a bit. Almost a hammer fist thrown by Christensen. And delay on the knockdown. We'll see it on replay. It's a modified hammer fist. And now the mandatory eight to Toby for Mergliata. The way Toby's on his eye looks like it might have got him in the eyeball. I'm not really sure. Not sure where the bell rung. I don't know. Sound like I'm back doing pride, Chris. Oh, you're back, <laughs> you're back fighting in Japan. I think now that, the bell. What that punch, it cut open the eye of Toby. It's a pretty bad looking cut. So let's see what the doctors do. Because it looks like it's in a bad place, to be honest with you. Here's going to be another look at that punch, I hope. Uh, no, well, well, the Himmel face looked like he blocked it in a way, so he just didn't get a full range on it, but bare knuckle just a little bit right there. See how he blocked it with his arm, but he still continued to come down with that right hand, just caught him in the right spot. Looked like it did some damage to the eye. Somewhere between a hammer fist and an overhand. He's trying to throw the overhand, but the arm got in the way. Look, boom. So. I wouldn't really consider it a hammer fist, but uh, I, I, I guess it kind of be, could be considered one. But good job of our cut man there stopping that. It's in a bad spot, but it's not bleeding right now, so it shouldn't impede his ability to fight. So Chris, I've sussed it out. When we're hearing those bells, they're not having the clackers with the wood. They're using the bell for the 10 seconds. Very confusing. Round number two. I still like in Japanese MMA, they do it to this day. As soon as the fight is over, they ring the bell. <laughs> yeah, immediately. Good round number one for Jordan Christensen. Real time scoring, so that's not speculation. Those are the actual three judges' scorecards, and they're spot on. 10 8 for Christensen with that one knockdown in round one. You know, I, I am very impressed with Toby's ability to take a punch, but the ones that had me got knocked down wasn't really he was hurt. It was, it was in the eyeball. The eye was hurt, and the blood was bothering it, but it wasn't that he got hit by it. Christensen off balance, now resetting. Toby taking his time. The sharpshooter right hand just off the mark. 80 seconds remaining, round two. the straight punches coming from Toby right now. He's doing a good job of being very active out right now. Stalking his opponent. Brandon Toby extremely humble. He said, look, I'm not overly fast, I'm not overly strong, but I have outstanding cardio and I can wear down Jordan Christensen through this continual forward pressure. And that's really important, understanding your limitations and focusing on your strength. That's exactly what it's doing. It's pushing the pace the entire time. It's extremely mature for a 21-year-old fighter to have that level of self-awareness and self-assessment. Usually you think you're good at everything. The left hand partially through from Christensen. Toby has recovered very well here in round two from being knocked down in round number one from that right hand of Christensen. I, and I don't think it was a powerful punch that did it. It just said it cut him open and hurt his eye. It wasn't that he was really hurt from the punch. Christensen very much on his back foot here in round number two. Toby back in the orthodox stance. Christensen, there's that overhand right again partially landed. And again, that's not the bell. That's the 10-second clack, which came in 14 seconds. Well, they hit it three times to the kill. That's just the 10-second clack. Either that or Kazuki Sakuraba just some, subbed somebody. There's round number two. That was Dan Margliata saying to Toby, you cannot extend the fingers forward. Very interesting round right there because Jordan Christensen was landing good punches. Back straight shot down the plane. 
brain turn is coming forward with breath. a lot of volume. Come on, so you, hey, never really you know need to pick it up. How right? the judges are going to score that. You're going to be very careful. We're going to find out here real quick. That's what I love about the open scores. I'm totally a big fan of the open scores. The live score, and you want to see what's going on right here, the real time. Right, happy, you want to praise right, it. I think it's good because pushing. you know exactly right. where you stand. I want you, you know to how you have to make it. Just. And again, as you see that on the screen, we're seeing it, but the fighters are seeing it. It is shown in the corners. So again, as you assess that, two judges gave round two 10 9 for Christensen, one gave it 10 9 for Toby. So the fighters know exactly where they are, the corners know exactly where they are, entering round number three. Outstanding. Ready? Ready? Yeah. Look. Round number three underway. Braden Tovey versus Jordan Christensen in the middleweight division. So it looks like the, the judges right now are looking more for effective punches oh, hey, as opposed body, to volume. Yes, great that's to exactly great that's the people in the back. People are getting to the inside for Jordan Christensen. Left to the body. Allowing this right. to continue no action, no clinch now on the overhook. Get up, ready. It's an inactive quick separation from Mergliata. And that right there is where you might think that Jordan Christensen has the advantage. He's older, he's stronger, he's more powerful, and he wears a pump down. Right hand misses from Toby off balance. Standing on the right jab is Christensen. Christensen again circling on the outside. Snap jab, overhand right. Christensen taking himself off balance. Toby continues to come forward to his credit. I like the way Toby, he just continued to mirror his opponent's hips. Staying right in front of his bunch of clock. He can't have to let him move side to side. What we might call cutting off the ring. Christensen now resetting in the southpaw stance. Continual switch of stances for both Toby and Christensen thus far in this fight. 40 seconds remaining, round three. Christensen's corner right now is telling him move forward. They don't like the way he's continuing in that Toby pressure. That left hand getting through from Christensen. And now I think it looks like he hurt the other eye. Did he cut it open? So Toby holding his right eye. Uppercut just missed from Jordan Christensen. Christensen now a sense of urgency. 15 seconds remaining, round three. That was confusing. <laughs> And that's the 10 second clack or the 10 second bell. That is the bell that ends round number three. Very similar to the last round, I believe. Uh -oh. Is he throwing up? That's going to be. That might be the end of the fight. That'd be very unfortunate right now for the guy who probably won all three rounds. So Dr. Don Muzi, the chief medical officer for Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship in the corner, Braden Toby. You need to talk about. Hey, listen, listen. You're not talking about nothing. Everything's good, dude. Everything's good. Literally saw Christensen. Don't worry about him. He's not doing anything. He's doing his job. Spitting or perhaps vomiting into his bucket. And you're not pouncing. I'd definitely be saying that was spit. That would mean. Vomit? No, that's not that vomit. Shot, I've never vomited. We need to, I don't, I don't even know what vomit is. I try and say whatever because I wouldn't want this knee. fight stop when you won the first three rounds. Straight right. punches down the pipe. That straight left is Absolutely. money. The overhand left is money. On, on, Especially when two of the judges, he's won all three rounds. On the other one, he's won two out of three. And that's three nil across the board. Ten nine for Christensen in round number three. Seconds out called. We're set for round number four. Go. We got time. We got time. Now Dan Bergliata, sending Jordan Christensen to see Dr. Don Muzi. Both fighters medically cleared to start round number four. Now you gotta know right now, Toby knows the score, he's gonna start coming. With a lot of pressure, he has to do something to change the pace of this fight. He knows he's losing. No question about it. So Toby certainly has to have a sense of urgency. As that right hand gets through from Christensen, perhaps more importantly, Toby's corner has to have a sense of urgency. Well, if I'm Toby, I'm pushing the pace as hard as I can because you got to think. I feel like the other guys maybe having some problem with conditioning, getting tired. You want to push the pace. I don't know if they thought he might have been bothering over there or whatever, but if they saw that, I'd be telling him to push the pace as much as he can, wear him down. 
You can see the numbers right here. Christensen with a very good percentage on his sprints. Oh. Good left hand lands from Christensen on the overhand. Jordan Christensen has been at his most effective on those overhands. Overhand rights and overhand lefts. That was a big overhand left. Absolutely. We always talk about the number one factor is the damage being done. That's my number one factor is winning the fight. So if you land those hard punches, I think you win even over the volume. Um, 50 seconds remaining round number four. Let's go, guys. Christensen very patient, hovering on the outside, looking for his openings, and finding it there again with the right hand. His timing has been on point to this point, Chris. And I know Toby, he talked about not being a heavy-handed guy, but he's going to have to really do something to earn respect from Christensen right now and change his pace. He's going to have to put everything into these punches. He's going to have to sit down, usually really focus on his footwork and right, torque clean, and okay. twist and being able to really put power in. Hands up, right hands up. What now Look pouring up. out of Toby's left nostril. Cut outside of his left brow. Final seconds, round number four. What was that 10 second, Bill? We do love that. <laughs> that would be a meme. Another big left hand from Jordan Christensen. And that is the end of round four. We move to the fifth and final round. Okay, at this point, though, Toby's down big. Probably lost every round so far, so. but he's still in the fight. What he has to do is he really has to change everything. He's going to start going for knockout punches. By that, I mean he's going to have to plant that foot and dig and twist. And by that, I mean he's going to like, like you're trying to put out a cigarette and really twist on that foot, rotate the hips, and put power into it. Here's Christensen right there, waiting for that big left hand. That's what he keeps doing. Wait, wait for Doherty to come forward, and then he unloads on him. Same thing, same thing. Wait for his opportunity. Whack! He's just letting Doherty come in. Christensen vomited in his corner between rounds four and five onto the canvas, and this is going to be a medical stoppage TKO win for Braden Tovey. Wow! You see the disbelief on the look of on the face of Jordan Christensen. One round away from winning this fight, dropping Braden Toby in round number one, and Christensen vomiting on the canvas, just like in the unified rules of MMA, under these bare knuckle rules, vomit on the canvas, that's the end of the fight, medical stoppage TKO win for Braden Toby. And to be honest with you, he's lucky that didn't happen before that round because he, he did vomit a little bit. Unbelievable, what a terrible way for Jordan Christensen to lose this fight. Oh, that's what the fight's over. I threw up on the mat. Not, not sure what it says about me, but that's the second vomit TKO I've commentated this year. Right? One in MMA. Wow. And then one in PKFC. Not a very common thing. And that's just got to be heartbreaking for Jordan Christensen. And again, there was no speculation. With real-time scoring, he knew that he was up. He knew that he was around away. He basically just could not get knocked down four times or knocked down round five, <laughs> and the round was his. And the win for Braden Tovey. Here's Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, our ringside physician steps in and calls a stop to this fight at the conclusion of round number four. By TKO, Braden back. Chance, Toby. I mean, you have to feel horrible right now for Christensen. You feel good for Toby, even though I'm sure he's not happy with that win. He did learn a lot in there. He shows his toughness. He showed he continued to push forward and anything's possible when you do that. But not the way you want this fight to end, Sean. Full credit to Brayden Toby, 21 years old, making his pro combat sports debut. He continued the fight. He never quit in this bout. He got up. He continued the fight. Highly unusual and unlikely circumstances. And he gets the win. Jordan Christensen in full control, but then vomiting on his stool onto the canvas between rounds four and five. That's the medical stoppage. The winner, by way of fourth round medical stoppage TKO, Braden Tovey defeats Jordan Christensen. For a long time, the fighters in this division were scared to say my name, so I took on the boogeyman. Let's really test it out. Let's really see who's the big dog in the world, who's really the top dog.
This is the fight of my life. This is the hardest, the hardest camp I've ever had, the best shape I've ever been in. And he's going to see the best me, and I'm sure I'm going to see the best him. This is everything to me. I'm taking that belt home with me. I'm cool until you say my name. Once you say my name, now we got a problem. Now I got to come show you why you should have never spoken my name. Dave Mundell, thanks for taking this flight. We're going to go in here and put on a show. You already know what's up. Down goes Ronnie Forty. Welcome to the world of Bare Knuckle TV. Watch every live Bare Knuckle Fighting Championship pay-per-view event for only $4.99 per month. Enjoy our all-new library of content, including unlimited access to the full library of BKFC pay-per-views, behind-the-scenes access, exclusive BKFC original series, and additional live Bare Knuckle fights from around the globe. You can access it anywhere you want, anytime you want, instantly on most streaming devices. It's available right now on Bare Knuckle TV. Over 1,000 hours of on-demand content, uncut and uncensored. All here, anytime you want, anywhere you want, for only $4.99 a month. Subscribe now exclusively at BKFC.com. Tonight only, you'll receive one free Odd Socks item when you spend $25 or more at BareKnuckleShop.com and use the promo code BKFC24. Check out the huge selection of merch with styles and sizes for everyone at BareKnuckleShop.com. And again, a reminder, you'll receive one free Odd Socks item when you spend $25 or more. Just use promo code BKFC24.